Hello and good evening. My name is Asa Graf, and tonight I'm going to be exploring hardware-based random number generators. To begin, why do we need to generate truly random numbers? Well, the possibilities are extensive and endless. For example, secure data transmission requires the generation of truly random keys by both parties to ensure that both parties are who they say they are and to in ensure the integrity and security of the transmission session. If the keys aren't truly random, they can be cracked and the transmission session interrupted or intercepted. In addition, in situations such as a lottery, truly random numbers are essential to ensure the fair selection of a winner. In addition, when conducting statistical analysis on a random sample, it's important that the sample be truly random to reduce the bias of the researcher and a good random number generator is an essential tool in accomplishing this task. So, how do computers generate these, sort, these random numbers? Well, there are two main methods by which this is accomplished. The first is in software. Software-based random number generators, or SRNGs, rely on a variety of different algorithms to generate the random result. Software-based random number generators can be fast and cheap, as they are written in code. In addition, SRNGs are very upgradable, as a new revision only requires that a software patch be applied to, to, the, rec to the affected devices. However, because an algorithm is by definition deterministic, the same set of inputs can give you the same set of outputs, and they can never be tr truly proven to be random. For this reason, software-based random number generators are often referred to as pseudo random number generators. Hardware-based random number generators, on the other hand, do not have this problem. HRNGs require or rely on a physical source of entropy to compute the random result. I'll talk a little bit more about entropy in a little, little bit, but right now all you need to know is that a source of entropy is impossible to predict. So a system which samples this and turns it into a string of bits was therefore impossible to crack. However, HRNGs can be slow as they require a certain amount of entropy to accrue before the random result is returned. In addition, they can be difficult to upgrade and expensive, as is the case when dealing with any hardware-based solution that requires each revision to be designed, tested, and manufactured before it can be implemented. So, entropy. For the uninitiated, entropy is simply a fancy term for a system's tendency to drift towards a state of disorder. This can explain heat transfer, as a hot object in a higher state of disorder can come into co contact with a colder object, which is in a lower state of disorder. Disorder, in the form of heat energy, is then exchanged from the hot object to the cold object. And the cold object increases in temperature and the total entropy of the system goes up. This can also help explain why we cannot have an engine with an efficiency greater than 100% because the total entropy of a system must increase or stay the same. The system in which entropy occurs can be as large and as all-encompassing as the universe, which has huge implications on science, or as small and localized as a refrigerator or a stove. For our purposes, we will concern ourselves with sources of entropy that can be observed or tapped by an electronic circuit to generate a random string of bits. Tonight, I would like to talk about three possible sources of this entropy. The first is radioactive decay. In any radioactive sample, we have a decay rate that is known. However, this rate of decay is probabilistic. That means that in any given time frame, we know that there is a 100% chance that the sample will decay However, we cannot accurately determine when these decay events will occur, or will occur. By detecting each individual decay event, we can measure the time between each occurrence and generate truly random numbers. While this is a theoretically simple method 
of, of generating random numbers, and it's one of the simplest to grasp. Radioactive detectors are expensive and cumbersome, and of course, require an actual radioactive sample. Therefore, they, these sorts of solutions are expensive themselves and often very difficult to maintain. Perhaps one of the easiest methods of generating random or generating sources of entropy in, in modern processors is timer jitter. Now in every modern processor there's one or more timers that generate a square oscillating signal. This is used in timing of clock signals and other applications within the processor. However, this signal is only square in theory and in practice is more rounded with some electrical noise in it and a rise time and a fall time before it's actually triggered or detected to be in a high or low state. By taking two or more independent timers and comparing their rise, fall, or trigger times, we can compare the variance between these two as they're theoretically running at the same frequency. We can compare the variance between these two and that will give us a source of entropy. Since almost every, since every digital processor has one or more timers in them, processor, it, it can be extremely simple to implement and require absolutely no external hardware. As each processor has the hardware it needs already within the chip. The last source I'd like to talk about is avalanche noise. Now this is a phenomenon unique to semiconductors and specifically diodes. Now a diode is an electrical component that only allows current to flow in one direction. In, this ap in the application of avalanche noise, a transistor is often used as a diode, placed in a circuit such that it's in the opposite, it's placed in a circuit such that it doesn't conduct, that is, it is in reverse bias. Now, when this transistor is driven to a high enough voltage, it enters a state of what's called breakdown. Now, during breakdown, it does begin to conduct a slight amount of current in the reverse direction. When it does this, electrons entering, entering the silicon can tunnel through the gaps and the barriers between the two different layers of silicon and knock other electrons free, of, and other, knock other electrons free of their positions, which creates an avalanche of electrical noise that cascades through the transistor. This, can, this electrical noise can then be amplified and sampled to create a random string of numbers. In conclusion, when designing a system where security is of the utmost importance, it is wise to consider an entropic, hardware-based solution as a superior alternative to one implemented entirely in software. However, hardware and software-based solutions can work in tandem, with an HRNG providing a truly random seed for an SRNG, which can then be used to generate a large sequence of successive random numbers. SRNGs are often faster and more appropriate for generating this sort of sequence. In addition, SRNGs are often adequate for most applications, as it is only in instances where security is paramount that you go the extra mile to implement a costly and complicated hardware-based solution. Thank you very much for watching, and good night.